What's up guys and welcome to Scav Run on Interchange. We have spawned in with a fairly small ba backpack and vest. We have armor and we have a headset and a VPO with eco bullets. We got the Scav Camp uh, spawn and we have 23 minutes to try and get some really good loot. So let's head straight into Oli. I've been getting fairly empty raids on interchange at a scav lately. Uh, it seems most of the people playing are just hitting up the the high tier loot and then dipping. Uh, nobody really sticks around for the smaller stuff that still generates quite a bit of money. Midwipe. My rule technically is I pick up everything and I swap as I go because it's better to come out with something than nothing. Uh, and whenever you can, you do this, where you pick up a bigger rig in order to get more space. Oh, we can't actually use that. Let's keep the pom pom on. It's a bad helmet either way. The packet does have a bit more armor, but it's it's not really anything substantial. I like to hit up these PCs because they are often forgotten, and. I can't say how many times I've gotten a graphics card out of these, this wipe. It's that weird Tarkov thing where you feel like the bullets are aimed at you, but that isn't really the case. So after hitting up these computers, I like to check these two um, shelves. Sometimes I've seen like keck tapes, water hoses, stuff like that. And then we hit the computers again. This time people have actually done a, f a good job at checking out these computers. By the way, this is going to be the experience sometimes. Where you check this stuff and it isn't what you want it to be. So you just keep checking. I like to check here on these shelves. Nothing good have actually spawned on this one for me, so I usually skip that. Uh, but I check these two and I check the the floor on these shelves here. That's just like this. We found e-motors. We found... Now I can't actually take the e-motors, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get rid of the scav vest and I'm gonna make space for the e-motor like this. After that I check these shelves and there's a slight chance that something good spawns on the back end of these. Nothing good really. Alright, let's keep going further down. Check these, check these, check these, check these, nothing. There's a toolbox right here that we check out. Usually it's quite visible, so people do check it out, um, but this time they have done it. Screws. You check out the shelves on these. Doesn't really spawn loot uh, that often, but I've seen stuff like military tubes. Uh, or is it military tubes? No, is it silicone tubes? Uh, spawn and they go to they go for about eleven and a half straight to therapist, so it's always a safe pickup in order to get that ten k per slot. Take that. I can't actually hear anyone. Helix goes for about 9k on the flea market. 
There's plexiglass and another helix and someone had probably dropped that so there's another one here. I don't think they spawn on the floor. Uh, we can actually... What, what type of bullets do we have here? I'm not quite sure. Let's unload. HP. Let's get rid of that. Actually, we just need the one mag. I'm not planning on fighting. Nothing is on that shelf. There's another one coming. Might be an AI scav. Got some RAM and CPU. That's about 15k. And a tip that I that I use, I don't know, actually know if this is 100% correct because it's accounting for stuff that I can't sell somehow. But if you hit tab and you go to overall, you can see a total cost of items in the stash. And since scabs don't really have a stash, it must account for like your inventory here. So how it how it calculates that I'm worth about 400k right now, I don't know. Maybe it calculates like brand new value on the weapons, like if I throw the VPO. You see it goes down by about 30k. If I pick it up, it goes up by a 30k. So it does calculate the, the things that you have on you. And I find that to be extremely helpful, just know that Whenever you sell anything, it's about 100k less than what it actually shows. Because I don't know what it's calculating that I don't have. Alright, but that was back in the volley. Uh, now I'm heading straight into the computer rooms. This door is always open. It spawns open. So even if it is open, don't be discouraged. Just go in there and see what you find. If you're stuck on the cigarettes quest, this is actually a great room for that. There's always a cigarette spawns on the desks. And now we have an hard drive and a PCB. Let's keep going. PC cord and caps. Let's check the value of us, and we're up to 430,000. Let's check the time. We have 15 minutes left, which is plenty time. Let's check the second computer room. Nothing on the desks there. And let's check the PC here. Electric components, straight to therapist, that's 11k. Always worth picking up, especially in a slow round like this. No PC, no PC, and there's one PC here. The desk to my left might have some food spawns. We have a hard drive here, and we have wires. Let's check for food. Nothing, and nothing. So if you head out this way, the new Embercom extract is at that, that uh, point right there. But I want to keep looting and swap out some of the stuff that I have in my backpack. Like the screws and all that. If I find something better, I will switch to it. I think that's an AI scav right there. I like to check in these uh, escalators. Uh... I don't even know if it's called an escalator, my, my brain is sort of foggy right now. Uh, for dead scavs. If they have a bigger backpack, I might go take that. 
But what I do here is I take the second E motor. That's another 60 to 70k depending on time of day. There is a Bitcoin on valuable spawn in these lockers and what I like to do is just run up to the wall and walk and you see this white little dot on my... When that pops up that means there is something in there so I will actually drop... What, is, what key is this? Uh, that might be... That might be good. I'm dropping these. Let's take the gold chain, that's 21,000 to therapists. But I actually like saving all the gold chains uh, as I use them to get gazelle armors from Ragman. It's a fairly nice trade or barter as it's called. So we have looted Oli, we have looted the computer rooms of Oli, or close to Oli. And now I'm heading into the stores. And I'm, I keep doing what I always do, and I check for dead scavs. I want another rig, or a bigger backpack. There's a duffel bag here, and it has already been checked out, because there was a space missing here. If this was the only item that spawned here, it would spawn right there. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the ram, I'm gonna take the caps. Tex Texco or Tex Texho is a store that spawns technical items. I'm hearing someone run up. It might be PMC. There's a flashlight there. It's very rare that a scav spawns with a really decked out weapon. I'm dropping the bandage. Taking the wires. Check the shelves and check the shelves here. Nothing and nothing. Now I only learned this quite recently and I've been doing this on every every scav run I do on interchange. Right here is a medical spawn. I've found things like augmenting pills, uh, bandages, and apparently someone in a video had found a lead expander. So, just make it a habit whenever you walk there, check check that destroyed crate. There's a wooden crate right there, and but I'm not going to check it out right now. Now you have Rasmus in here. Early wipe, this is probably the most contested store. And you find things like Tetris, drop the hard drive, take the Tetris. And then you drop the other hard drive, you take the DVD. They are worth more. Not by a lot, but anything counts. The Tetris sells for about uh, 80k. I drop the DVD and I take the power cords. And while we are at it, let's check our overall, and we're up to 665-ish. So, if we get out, we probably have a decent rate here. Now that's a GPU, and we'll take that, let's drop the mag, and let's check the overall, and we're up to 85, 850. And as you can see, this place was probably looted, but they missed the Tetris and they missed the GPU there. So people are actually pretty, pretty bad when it comes to clearing out rooms uh, like efficiently. Nothing spawned there. Now there's one more thing I want to check. Uh, at, at this point, I would, I would actually recommend people to start heading out but I already have a lot of GPUs and the scav run isn't that important for me right now uh, I need to head to Mantis which is a medical spawns room and it's the one right there 
And what I want to look for is hidden spawns for lead axes. This is a bank robber. I can't actually take that. Anything that gives you more space in your backpack is, is valuable. So a bank robber is 6 spaces, but it gives you 8, 8 slots. So if you have, like, a lot of 1, one space items, I would actually take that. <coughs> Sorry. But I can't actually fit the emotors in there, so there's no point. So that that is a spawn right there. On top of this, nothing. Then you walk over here, and on the floor there should be another spawn. And uh, I'm looking for the white marker that I got before, when I got the gold chain. Nothing. There's a jack-in behind there that I'm not going to bother checking. There's a med bag here that I always check. Nothing. And then you head straight down and take a left. There's a jacket here and a duffel bag. Now the jacket is bugging out. There we go, nothing. So this room has has been looted. Now we have seven minutes left, and there's plenty of time to get our extract. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over in this direction. There's a duffel bag here, and a lot of file cabinets behind this. We're hearing some scabs. Check the shelves here for industrial spawns. There's a jacket here. I'm guessing it's looted already. Yes, it is. On these shelves, there's always like pliers and stuff. And stuff. There's an awl. We take that. We drop the helix. And here you have 12 cabinets. And another four on the back of this. So let's check it out. It looks to be looted already. That that's a drill. I can't actually take that. And it's only worth about seven seventeen thousand. And it takes up four slots, so it's not really that worth it. The lamp I will actually take because I use them to get a tri zip backpack. Four ES lamps will give you a Pretty decent size uh, backpack. That's a diary that someone had missed. I will actually drop the uh, the kvass. I will drink because I don't actually care for the drink. The diary is about thirty-two thousand on the flea market. Or if you want the dollars, you can just sell it to uh, to Peacekeeper. There's another ES lamp. I will take that. I don't think... This is a plus 7 ergo, so I will actually keep that. I will drop the piece... The other helix. I didn't even realize that I had it. And cigarettes. And we have four more here on the back. USB, A, we don't really need that. It's not worth a lot. Rechargeable battery, that's actually worth something. I will drop the PCB, I will take this. The rechargeable battery sells for 11,000, so it's better in that slot. Now, I have 4 minutes left. My scav is level 15, it has level 13 endurance and level 9 strength. So I've played scav not a lot but a decent amount. There is some bodies here. Nothing really of interest. Nothing really of interest. That knife is better, so I'm taking that. I'll take the half mask. And now we head out. If you're running out from the front of the mall, like this, as a scav or railway over there is your best option. If you're running out on the back end, like behind, 
like behind the mall, then Emrecom over there is the best option. It takes about three minutes to run from like the front of either direction. So leaving at three minutes, 350, you will still make it. I can't say the amount of times that I've greeted and actually left and had one or two seconds to spare. If you're a PMC and you're looking to do the uh, 25 scavs uh, quest for Ragman, I actually recommend getting into interchange and waiting until the last 10 minutes because all the AI scavs like lurk in this area. I've got them probably like 15, 20 in one raid uh, before. With a mix of play scavs and normal scavs, but late interchange, nobody's really here. What I'm looking for here is another stash. It's not the first pile of stuff, it's the second. Sorry if my scarf is huffing and puffing, but it seems like there's some stuff left here. The sprats I will eat, and there's no nothing here I actually want to drop, so let's just go. There's another stash somewhere here. Uh, like a hidden underground stash. Uh, I don't actually exactly know in what direction it is. I just I remember seeing it in my first uh, how to play interchange video when I first started playing, and I never actually checked it out. But that's maybe for a future video, going through all the all the stashes on interchange. So we have a minute left, the extract is right there, it's on either side, and you can go in the deepest if you want to. Let's see, once and for all, overall 951,000, 952, so basically a million, if we can sell all the things correctly. We get some scav XP, but that's not really important. And let's start offloading here. Uh, the GPU is probably the most valuable here, and the Tetris. Now, when I say this, I actually mean it. People forget these all the time, and then they complain that they can't find any. For me, that just goes there. I'm keeping them for, for Bitcoin, uh, uh, what do you call it? The Bitcoin farm. As you can see, I'm already sort of stacking up on those. But I will add the value of that, which is about 300 to 350, depending on time of day, to our total. So let's start offloading here. Now some people might say don't pick up the, the weapons as they only add weight and you want to be as light as possible. Uh, I agree with that if you're playing PMC, but when you're paying for scav, all you care about is money. So now my scav is empty. I hit next. Nothing of importance here. Uh, all you might want to look at is your fence rep. If it goes up by a lot, then you probably did something. If you killed, if you killed a scav that was killing other scavs, you would gain. A lot of fence rep. So let's move the mic a bit closer here. And now, let's check it out. The pliers I got from uh, the workbench. I do this very simple, uh, what do you call it? The, the word has slipped mind, but you do, you do this, this you keep, this costs 7,000 on the flea, 
this sells to seven like for seventeen thousand straight to therapist. So you're making it takes about fifteen minutes, so that's almost forty thousand per hour if you keep doing it. It adds up. But that's how you know that pliers were there, right? Let's start. Thirty four um, we can sell it for 35. I'm starting out at 1.75 and I will be speed running this and then we can uh, check before and after. So let's go. Okay, now we're back. We were at uh, 175 or 175 million and now we're at 2.2 .2, so we've gained about uh, 500,000 and then you, as you can see we still have our GPU here. And when we check the, the price of this as you can see it ranges from 340 to 380 uh, a middle point let's say 360 so in that raid, we made about 900,000 and it was fairly simple, no hiccups at all. I'm not actually going to sell this, I need this uh, for later. As you can see, I, I have been saving them for when I actually do need them. But were I to sell it, you could easily call this a 900,000 raid, basically for free. So. That was my scav run on interchange. That's that's how I loot uh, Oli, the back end of Oli, and the computer rooms. Uh, I hit up some stores, some high tech stores, and uh, not all of them. Uh, there was an escalator there, and I could have gone up to Tech Light, which is another store, but it's a highly contested area. But for now, if you were looking for a beginner guide on how to scav interchange and make money. And I hope I've answered some questions for you. And if you want to see more, I would definitely let me know in the comments and maybe like the video. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.